This right here is the 32CI mic preamp and USB interface, and it's from Icon Pro Audio. It's a really impressive mixer for musicians and content creators, and it's got some really cool features. But it also has kind of a kind of a flaw. It's a weird one, really, and also weird. No one seems to have caught this problem before me, which just blows my mind and none of the other reviews have mentioned it and the manufacturer definitely didn't know about it. Now, the flaw isn't a deal breaker for me, but it's definitely something you need to know about it. Trust me, your ears will thank you. Hey, it's Matt Haynes. Thanks for stopping by. Now, we'll talk about this problem in a minute because it's it's quite a story. And I should mention that Icon Pro Audio loaned this to me for a review. I'll be returning it shortly, and I am not getting paid to review this. So first, let me tell you about the, well, the amazingness of this interface, the 32CI. It's a collaboration between Harrison Audio and Icon Pro Audio. Harrison is a company that has been around for decades making, you know, those really big studio grade mixing consoles. And one thing that Harrison mixing boards are famous for is their EQs, which have been built into the 32CI. So Harrison and Icon teamed up to bring that special Harrison sound to a smaller USB interface. And Harrison, well, they've got quite a rock and roll legacy too. Michael Jackson, Kansas, ABBA, Paul Simon, and, and many other big names have used Harrison boards at some point. The same transformer-based mic preamps and EQs are what's built into the 32CI. So you've got two combination XLR and quarter inch inputs for channels one and two, and you can select either line input level or a high Z instrument level from, you know, a guitar, for example. You've also got phantom power, which you would expect, which you can select individually on each channel. And that's actually a nice touch because, you know, a lot of interfaces, they turn on phantom power to all the mic inputs at once. So, which can be bad, but here, like for example, you could have a ribbon mic on one channel and a condenser mic on the other and not destroy your ribbon mic with phantom power. You also have two more inputs, and I think the idea is to have them as a stereo feed. Uh, you can set them to minus 10 or plus 4 dB. Now, there's no separate physical gain control for this input, and I'm sure the thinking is maybe to plug in a keyboard or a workstation for these inputs and adjust the volume at the source. I'll talk more about the input channels in a moment, but on the output side, you've got a master gain knob, which is just nice and beefy and chunky. And you've got a stereo LED meter system that runs kind of in a circle around the knob. You've got two separate headphone outputs and you can control both the volume and also the mix between direct signal and the USB playback for each headphone set independently. And you also have two separate stereo speaker outputs so you can go back and forth between two different sets of monitors, you know, so you can check your mixes. Icon's marketing materials talk about the 32CI being a 12 input USB interface. And I know you're looking at it and saying, how is that possible? So it's technically true, but for many people, not that practical. So where do the other eight inputs come from? If you have an outboard rack of preamps that have an optical toss link output, like the, the ADAT format of optical output, then you can run that into or even out of the 32CI, but you have to have that outboard gear to begin with. And most eight input interfaces that I've seen will allow you to plug directly into your computer via USB. So this is, in my mind, only useful if you have other gear and also want to use the Harrison preamps on the 32CI. If you plug this directly into an Apple Mac, it's going to work seamlessly. However, there is a driver and software that you can download and it unlocks some features and it's called IO Pro. Now that does work with Mac and Windows and the, the interface works with Mac and Windows. This is how you would control the levels of anything coming in from that, you know, that eight channel optical input that you have sitting around. You can also insert plugins like VST and audio unit plugins and things like that. But, you know, if you want, you could just skip the software completely, uh, at least on the Mac, you can skip the driver even and just connect it directly to your, your digital audio workstation, your DAW, your DAW. I never know what to call that. Your DAW. <laughs> There's also an input output port output port. You try saying that. There's also an input output port on the back called the OTG port or the on the go port. That's kind of fun. And this is a separate USB-C port that will connect to devices such as phones and tablets. And, and you actually get some streaming functions by using this port. Now, unfortunately, 
for me at least, you if you're trying to hook up an iPhone, you need the Apple camera connection kit or something similar to that. And I don't have one of those lying around. And I have to return the 32 CI soon. So I haven't been able to test that. All right, so more on these input channels because that's kind of where the excitement is. Now, first off, there's plenty of gain. I'm using a dynamic mic here and not using a booster and the 32 CI handles it just fine. This, by the way, is the uh, SE Electronics Dynacaster. Yes, it does have a booster built in, but I've turned that off on purpose so that you can hear how the uh, the 32 CI handles it. So this is proof that you could absolutely plug in a Shure SM7B or a Rode Pod mic or something like that, a really um, low sensitivity dynamic microphone, and I don't think you're gonna have any problems. Along with the instrument and phantom power buttons, both channels allow you to flip the phase of your input. And I know you were not asking until just this moment, why would you wanna flip the phase of your input? Well, if you're maybe recording multiple instruments with several mics, like maybe a horn section, and you're getting some weird phasiness, sometimes flipping the uh, the polarity of the uh, of one of the channels can uh, suddenly make it sound better. And there's other things, like, you know, room overheads and things like that. So I don't know that I've seen that on a, on a small USB interface like this before. That's kind of interesting. I don't know as a content creator I would use that all that much, but it's, you know, for musicians and, and, and recording studios, that's kind of neat. Also, there is a pad button on each channel, so if you got some really hot levels coming in, you can dial those back. So what about the EQ on this? What's the big deal anyway? Well, the basic Harrison EQ setup consists of a low pass and a high pass filter, and you can remove hiss and rumble or tone down your drum overheads, you know, reduce the effect of plosives on a mic and so on. And so here's what the low pass filter sounds like as it cuts the highs. You know what, I wanna hear what that sounds like. Okay, so I'm going to lower the uh, low pass filter frequency now and you will hear my voice get duller and duller and duller. And don't make any comments about me being dull in the first place. And it goes all the way to the bottom there. But the unique sound of the Harrison EQ is partly due to the high pass filter having a little resonant bump at its cutoff frequency. So just before it starts cutting, it actually boosts a little at the cutoff frequency. It's a little like an analog synthesizer with a resonance control on the filter. As you increase that resonance, the sound accentuates that cutoff frequency, kind of like this. <laughs> And that's what the bump button does. It turns on a little resonance and it's way milder than an analog synth, of course, but it adds an unusual character to your EQ. Okay, so before I hit the bump button or bump the bump button, I'm, I'm going to uh, sweep the uh, high pass filter here just so you can hear how it thins out the voice and it gets rid of the low end and it's getting brighter and thinner and, and all that. And we're losing our low end and Okay, so you get the sense of how that sounds there. Now, we're gonna do the bump here, here we go. And uh, so you should notice a different character here as we sweep up and we're talking and we're getting higher 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 and higher and higher and higher. And higher. Did you hear that little blip? Here, let me do it again. And there's the problem, the flaw, the way the circuit is designed at one specific frequency on that high pass filter, the feedback that helps create that subtle, you know, characteristic resonance elsewhere suddenly goes full throttle and you have a self oscillating EQ and it's pretty loud. And I'm not shouting because it deafened me. I'm just getting a little excited here. You could do some serious damage to your hearing if your monitors or your headphones are up loud at the time. Now, you have to really fiddle with the knob to get the sound to sustain like that, but even that bip as you pass through it is, is kind of disconcerting. Yeah, that's a little weird. You know what's weirder? No other YouTube reviewer that I know of mentioned this little problem. I mean, I like to think I do very thorough reviews, but surely someone else would have caught this. But wait the story gets even weirder. I asked my contact at Icon about this, and it turns out that even though the 32CI has been out at least a year and has gone through you know, several manufacturing runs, no one at Icon ever noticed this problem. And what's more, hundreds of users never mentioned it. But wait, there's 
more. Harrison took the circuit design for the Icon interface from their 32CS channel strip, which was released over 10 years ago and was meant to replicate like one channel strip of their vintage mixing consoles. Guess what? It turns out Harrison was able to replicate this little flaw on the original 32CS. So that's two products, 10 years, two companies, and, well, I can't do hundreds of customers with my hand, hundreds of customers, and I'm the one who notices this. I mean, that kind of makes me feel special, but... So I'm told that Harrison is looking at possibly tweaking the design for the next production run, although I don't have any word yet as to whether they're able to fix it. The Icon 32 Ci goes for $499, and yes, that's on the pricey side, but you're getting some pretty high-end features for that price. Separate fan and power controls for the mic channels, dual headphone outputs with independent levels and mixes, two sets of monitor outputs, not to mention transformer-based mic preamps and the classic Harrison EQ sound. And it looks distinctive, too, like a miniature vintage synthesizer. Kind of reminds me of an old Prophet 5. As I mentioned at the beginning, I don't think the EQ feedback issue is a deal breaker. The 32CI is a really high performer otherwise, but you do need to be careful. And if you're working with other people, you might want to give them a heads up about that little squeal. So would this be a big deal to you? Let me know in the comments.